Hello InfoTech students. Today we're going to be working on lesson five, which is adding tables to a slide. All right, so creating tables just like we've done before in Word, only this time in PowerPoint. Um, we're going to go ahead and start up PowerPoint and it tells us to open the ATM file. So I'm going to go to my data files and find lesson five and it should be ATMs. Okay, make this about like that, let's see, file, save as, we'll go back to our PowerPoint folder, oh, let's go to InfoTech, PowerPoint, lesson five, and we're going to name this ATMs final. Okay, it tells us to click below slide four in the left pane and we're going to press enter to insert a new slide with the title and content layout after slide four. On the new slide, we're going to click in the title placeholder and we're going to type the slide title, which is proposed ATM locations. And we're going to insert a table um, by clicking the insert table icon in the content placeholder. So these little symbols in here, if I click on this one, it'll um, add the insert table dialog box. And in the number of columns, we're going to type three. And um, then we can press tab to go to the next one for number of rows and we're going to specify we want six rows then we'll press OK. PowerPoint creates the table in the content area. Notice that formats specified by the current theme have been applied to the table. It says to click in the first table cell of the top row and we're going to type location then we'll press tab and we'll type site, study, complete, press tab, nearest competing ATM. Tab again, and it, so a tab allows us to move from cell to cell a little bit more easily. You don't have to pick up your hand, move it to your mouse to click to the next cell, or even move your hand to the arrow keys. It just is a little bit of a time saver. So then we're going to type in the following um, data. Springdale Cineplex. Yes. More than two miles. Glen Avenue. Big Foods, no, three blocks, tab, Finley Market Square, yes, one block, Center City Arena, yes, one block. Williams State College, no, half a mile. Okay, so when you're done, it should look like the image 5-3 in your book. All right. So it says to insert a new slide with a title and content at the end of the presentation. Okay, and click to display the new slide. On the insert tab, we're gonna click table. 
to produce the table grid and drag across the grid to select a 5 by 5 table or block and release the mouse to create the table. Um, says delete the new slide on which you've just created the table. Shucks. All right, so we're going to delete that slide. And it tells us to save the presentation. So you st should still have your proposed ATM locations uh, table saved. Next, we're going to be drawing a table. So um, still using the same document. It tells us to insert a new slide at the end of the presentation with title only. So um, we're going to go to layout here. And I'm going to click on title only layout. Oh, undo. I want to click down here and then we'll go new slide title only okay on the insert tab we're going to click table to open the table menu and then click draw table the mouse pointer changes to a pencil we're going to click and drag the mouse pointer to draw a frame approximately three inches high and the same width as the slide's title placeholder. Okay, so I may start it about right here. So we need to draw it as wide as our title placeholder and about three inches high. So it should be about that size. Okay. Um, when you release the mouse button, the new table appears, which has only one big cell, and the Table Tools Design tab is displayed. On the Table Tools Design tab, we're going to click um, Draw Table again. And in the Draw Borders command group, the mouse pointer becomes a pencil again. And we're going to Click and drag to draw a horizontal line that divides the table horizontally. Okay, so horizontally we're going to drag this across to um, divide this table that way. A dotted horizontal line appears. Release the mouse button to accept it. Okay, it says drag to draw the line starting slightly inside the border than on the border's edge. If you start dragging too close to the border, PowerPoint creates a new table frame rather than adding lines to an existing table. If you keep getting too close to the edge and creating new tables, you can right click in the table and select the cells to add new rows and columns instead of drawing them. All right, so now um, it says the drawing pencil pointer should stay on. If it turns off, click the drawing table button again to re-enable it. We're going to drag a vertical line through the middle of the table to divide it vertically. So I'm going to draw one down the middle like that. And it says to drag another horizontal line that divides only the lower right cells of the table horizontally. So we're going to drag another uh, line across like that. And we're going to drag one that goes vertically like that. Okay, so in the end, your table should look similar to the picture in 5-5. To turn the draw table button off, we're going to hit the escape key on the keyboard. And it says to type the text shown in figure 5-6 into the slide's title placeholder and into the table. You will format this table later in the lesson. So we'll name it Team Leaders. Over here we'll say Division Name Eastern Claude Simpson, Mary, Bailey. Okay. Tells us to save this presentation. 
All right, and we're going to leave it open to use in the next exercise. All right, so we're going to insert a new slide at the end of the presentation with um, title only layout. So new slide, title only. And type the slide title as ATM cost analysis. All right, we're going to click away from the title box and we're going to click the insert tab. And we're going to choose table drop down arrow and then we're going to click Excel spreadsheet. PowerPoint creates a small Excel worksheet on the slide. Note that power, the PowerPoint ribbon has been replaced with an Excel ribbon up here at the top. PowerPoint creates, um, uh, let's see, has been replaced. Okay, note the PowerPoint ribbon has been replaced, but the title bar still shows the ATM's final um, PowerPoint. Resize the word sheet object by dragging the lower right corner handle diagonally to the right to display columns A through F and rows 1 through 10. See how far we get there. Okay, so we can maybe go up a little bit and over some. Just go up a little bit. Okay, so we want to make sure we're seeing rows A or columns A through F and rows 1 through 10. Okay. It says take note when an Excel worksheet is open on a slide, you are actually working in Excel. To return to PowerPoint, you click outside the worksheet object. So it says to click the select all area, which is right here. In the upper left corner of the worksheet where the column headers and rows intersect, the entire worksheet is selected. We're going to choose font size, um, drop down arrow, and select font 18. And it says to type data in the worksheet cells. Um, it says C figure 5-8. To move between cells, use the arrow keys on the keyboard or press tab. To adjust the column list, position the pointer um, on the border between the column headings so the, the pointer turns a two-sided arrow and drag until all data appears. The overall size of the embedded Excel spreadsheet expands as needed as you widen the columns. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start typing in this information. Okay. Oh, let's go back down here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to use my arrow keys to move down. To type all of this in. Okay, so I'm going to go through and just kind of expand this until um, I feel like we're good here and I can read all of my text that I typed. Okay. All right, then we're going to go through and type in the numbers here 501. Tab three two zero 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 ten eight thousand three thousand four hundred and fifty thousand. I'll use my arrow keys. I'm using my keypad to make it go a little faster here.
All right. So I have all of that entered in. It says to click in cell F5 and type the following formula. Equal sign E5 minus sum. So I'm going to use that. And then it's B5 to D5. Okay, and I'll hit enter. All right, this uh, formula sums the values in B5, C5, and D5, and then subtracts them, subtracts the total from the value in E5. Um, it tells me, just going to make this a little bit wider, to copy that formula down using the fill handle. Okay. Um, let's see, um, drag over cells, of, okay, we did that, um, step 11, page 99 says click and drag over the range B5 through F9, okay, and then we're going to click the accounting number format, which is the dollar sign up here, okay, um, don't worry if some of the cells end up with a dollar sign or a number sign. Uh, with B5 through F9 still selected, we're going to click the decrease decimal button. Um, twice to remove the decimal points and trailing zeros for the number. Uh, it says to widen the columns as needed so there are no dollar signs in any of the cells. And it says to click in cell A1 and change the font size to 24. Okay, it says click outside the worksheet to return to PowerPoint. Your slide should look similar to figure 5-9. You may need to resize or reposition the object to center it on the slide. I think ours looks pretty good. Okay. Um, and it says to save the presentation. All right, still using the same document. However, we have a take note here. It says, you know a worksheet is open and ready to edit in Excel when it displays a heavy hatched border and the Excel ribbon. Okay, good to know. Next, we're going to insert a new slide at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to click down here with a title only layout. So new slide, title only. And we're going to type the slide title at the top, ATM total transactions. Click away from the title. And um, it says to locate and open the ATM total transactions word document. So I'm going to go here and we're going to open up this. For now, I want that open over here. Okay. Alrighty. Um, let's see. It says to press control A to select all and we're going to click the copy button on the home tab or you could press control C. Next we're going to go back to our ATM final PowerPoint and we're going to click the paste button on the home tab. The table from Microsoft Word is inserted in the PowerPoint presentation with the themes formatting. Delete the table you just inserted. Okay. I just press delete on my keyboard. Then locate and open the ATM total transactions Excel document. Alrighty, um, it 
says to select cells A1 through D7. And we're going to copy that. It says to go back to your ATM's final presentation and click the paste button. Okay, the table for Microsoft Excel is inserted in the PowerPoint presentation. Note that the theme's formatting isn't transferred in this case. It says to save the presentation. Pause, leave the PowerPoint open to use in the next exercise. So we're going to go to slide six. All right, and this time we're going to add row and a column. It says to click at the end of the word Bailey in the last cell and we're going to press tab. Okay, a new row appears. In the new row, type Western. And the um, first, and the Greg in the second column, and Valentine in the third. Click in the cell above Eastern. Click in, oh, sorry, actually, click in the cell containing Eastern. And on the Table Tools Layout tab, we're going to click Insert Above, right here. All right. A new blank row appears above the cells row. It says to drag the lower border of the first row upward, which would be right here. Decreasing that row's height as much as possible. Let's maybe stop about right there. Okay. Um, the text within that row prevents the height from being smaller than will accommodate. So we'll go even smaller maybe. All right. All right, in the new row, we're going to type northern, and um, we'll type Wesley and Kirk in the third. Okay, your results should look like figure 5-10. Okay. Um, it says click and drag across all of the cells in the division column to select that column. You can also place your cursor above the column until it becomes an arrow, like this. Okay. Um, on the Table Tools Layout tab, we're going to click Insert Right. A new blank column appears. In the new column, type the data shown in figure 5-11. If the table becomes so tall that it overruns the bottom of the slide, move the table upward on the slide as needed by dragging its outer border. Okay, so we'll type states and Michigan, Nebraska, North Dakota, Wisconsin. Okay, I'm going to hit my down arrow to go to the next cell. Connecticut, I might, and you know, you can also can zoom in if it's hard to read. Connecticut. Maine, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, and then I'm going to, um, oh, one more, Vermont, the down arrow, Arizona, 
let's go back. Enter California and New Mexico. Oops, looks like I misspelled Connecticut. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to zoom back out here. All right. So your slide should look similar to the fi picture on 5-11. It tells us to save our presentation, and we're going to leave this presentation open to use in the next exercise. So on slide 6, in the upper left cell division, we're going to click inside this cell. On the Table Tools Layout tab, it tells us to click the Delete button. In the rows and columns group. Um, and we're going to delete the column. The first column is deleted. It tells us to click the undo button. And we're going to click in the lower left cell western. And on the table tools um, layout tab, we're going to click delete again. This time we're going to delete this row. Okay, it tells us to click undo. And then we're going to save the presentation. <clears throat> Next, we're going to be moving a column. So it says to go to slide four. And in the second column, click in the second column, which is this one right here. And on the Table Tools Layout tab, we're going to click Insert. Insert Left. A new column is inserted between the first and second columns. It says to drag across all of the cells in the rightmost column to select them. And drag the selected column and drop it on top of the first cell in the blank column you created in step one. All right. And then release. The data from the selected column is moved to the new column and a blank column remains in the data's previous location. With the second column selected, we're going to press Control X to cut the column's data to the clipboard. The column disappears entirely. When you use Control X command to cut all data from a column, a blank column is not left behind as with drag and drop. We're going to click in the first row of the empty column and we'll press Control V, the um, paste command, and the data is placed in the empty column and the table returns to having only three columns. Drag the table's frame to recenter it on the slide if needed and may be slightly skewed to the left. So I'm just going to drag it over until I see that red dotted line that tells me it's mostly centered. Okay, and then we'll save the presentation. Next, we're going to resize and distribute rows and columns. It tells me to go to slide six and double click the vertical border between the first and second columns. So we're going to double click. Double clicking a column border adjusts the column width to fit the column's widest entry. It says to drag the horizontal border between Claude Simpson and Mary Bailey. So that Claude Simpson cells are short as possible if you need to be more precise in resizing. Well, you can use the tools in the cell size group on the table tools layout to specify exact widths and heights for table cells. It says to click in the cell that contains states. Okay, so this one, and 
on the table tools layout tab in the table size group we're going to click the width box to set the value to exactly seven inches Or we can just type in seven as well. Okay, in the cell size groups width box, set the value to exactly 3.1. Okay. The width setting in the table size group controls the width of the entire table. The width setting in the cell size group controls the width of only the column in which the active cell is located. The active cell is the one containing the insertion point. So to drag the outer border of the table to the right as needed to recenter the table beneath team leaders. Okay. Um, select the entire table by dragging across it. On the table tools layout tab, we'll click distribute columns button, which would be this one. Okay. Each column becomes the same width tells us to save our presentation. We're going to leave the presentation open to use in the next exercise. It says to go to slide six, if we, have, we should already be there. And we're going to select the cells containing Wesley Kirk. On the table tools layout tab, we're going to click merge cells. The two cells become one, and the text from both cells appears in the merge cell, separated by a paragraph break. Click at the beginning of the second name, and we're going to click the backspace button to delete the paragraph break between the two names so they appear on the same line. Press the space bar once if needed to add a space between the two names. Use this procedure in steps one through three to merge all of the other names. All right, so we're going to highlight that, merge, we'll click the backspace, and then hit space, merge, backspace, that one already had a space, so I don't need to do that, merge, backspace, space. All right. Um, Use this procedure in steps one through three to merge the cells containing two names of the representatives for the eastern region and leave each name on a separate line. Okay, so we're going to merge these two cells. Merge like that. All right. Select all three cells that contain states' names. Okay. And on the table tools layout tab, we're going to click split cells. The split cells dialog box opens and in the number of columns box, um, columns text box, we're going to type two to set the number of columns to two. If, if it is not already at that value in the number of rows, we'll type one. Okay, and then we'll click OK. Select the entire table, and then we'll click um, Distribute Columns once more. Distribute Columns is right here. Okay, um, for each division, move approximately half of the names from the existing cell to the empty cell to the right. You can move the text either with drag and drop or cut and paste. Okay, I like to do drag and drop because I feel like it's a little bit easier and quicker. 
Alrighty, so I'm going to drag these four over. Oh, let's try that again. Okay. Alright. So it should look something like this right now. And then it says recall, resize the columns as needed to fit the state's names. Well, I think they fit, actually. So we'll hit save to save the presentation, and then we're going to close it. Okay. Next, we're going to format some tables. So we need to open up the bids PowerPoint. We'll enable the content. And then we'll go to File, Save As. In Lesson 5, we'll name it Final Bids. Save. Tells us to go to slide 2 and click in the merged cell at the far left of the table. Let's say that's probably this one. Um, it says to click the Table Tools Layout tab, and we're going to choose Text Direction, and we'll select Stacked. This option will stack text with each letter below the previous one. Type in Vendor. Okay, in the merge cell, this text stacked um, text stacks in the merge cell. Select the text you just typed, and we're going to click on the Home tab, and then click the Character Spacing button, which is right here, and we're going to choose Very Tight. Okay. With the text still selected, we'll click bold from the font group on the home tab. And select the cells with the numbers in the price column. And we're going to uh, right align those numbers in the paragraph group. It says next to select the cells with numbers in the last two columns. And we're going to center those items as well. Select the cells in the column header row. Because they're, they are already blue, it will not ob be obvious that they are selected. It says to um, click center on the home tab to center those. And then click the table tools layout tab. And we're going to choose the align button in the alignment group all column headings are oh, okay so we want to align bottom which would be this one right here okay it says to save our presentation and we're going to leave it open to use in the next document Next, we're going to apply a table style. So it says to click anywhere in the table on slide 2. And we're going to click Table Tools Design tab. And we're going to choose more in the Table Styles group. Note that the table styles are organized into several groups. Best match for, do for document, um, light, medium, and dark. We're going to click the themed style to accent six table I believe it would be this one themed style to accent six this style is a very colorful alternative but not exactly what you want okay so we're gonna click more again and then click the medium style 3 table which is a black and gray combination okay your table should look similar to figure 5-16 it says to save the presentation and leave it open in the next exercise 
Next we're going to turn table style options on and off. So click anywhere in the table to select it if necessary. And then click table tools design tab. And in the table style options group we'll click um, banded rows. Okay, we're going to click first column. The first column receives special emphasis. And then we're going to select um, banded columns. Color bands are applied to the columns. So make sure banded rows is deselected. So it should look like this right now. Okay, so save the presentation and then close the file. And you can exit PowerPoint then. And you're done with lesson five.